Chapter 954, Wings, Dragons, it's some Japanese bullshit, you get the idea. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Pod D Cast, the only show that talks about One Piece. I'm best guy ever, and this is Give and Take. Hey baby. Welcome home from summer school, son. <laughs> it's a pleasure yeah. to have you. The summer school we have on the summer island the, the that, school mm-hmm. island mm-hmm. where all pirates correct. learn how to kill. <laughs> I took extra classes. Um, today we've got chapter 954, like giving wings to a dragon. How poetic sounding. But let's deal with this cover page. So when we last left our heroes, Gang, Beiji, and the boys were headed back to Thriller Bark to go meet Lola's family and reunite, reunite Chiffon with Lola, that is. And here we are, Volume 5. They cannot pass over the red line because of the ongoing reverie. So if you remember people, um, Thriller Bark is on the other side of the New World. And to get there, you either got to go down past Fishman Island or over the red line. Is it considered the old world? Uh, It's called Paradise is the official term for it, I believe. The first half of the Grand Line. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Which... uh, I think is is pretty neat. I think that was like a term. There was a term that was used early on in One Piece. I think this is how the development went. They it was it was said at a certain point like they call the Grand Line Paradise. That was said like very early in One Piece. I think before they got to the Grand Line, and then they got that, and that term like wasn't really used. However, it was like during the time skip. I th- I think it was actually during a, a kid like a, a part where we focused on kid right before the time skip. Or maybe right, I think it was right before the time skip, where, like, Kid and his boys were beating up some randos, and they were like, let us go back to paradise, let us go back to paradise. And he was like, ah, blah, 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 that doesn't mean anything. What are you talking about, the first half of the Grand Line? This is the new world, baby, and you're gonna die. So I think it was when the new world term was being coined, that's when they made paradise as, like, a uh, like a comparison point, like the first half of the Grand Line versus the second. So that's pretty cool. I think that's yeah. interesting. So the reverie still going on. Um, mm-hmm. We have no we have no news of what has happened there or what is Indeed. currently happening there. I Though doubt this we will ever might see might be a anything. little bit. This might be a little bit in the past. I can't quite like versus what Luffy and the gang are doing because they got to Wano and this was like this is where well, you Beiji, think this is like parallel. I I think it well. Okay, ju- I'm just examining the timelines. Like Luffy and the gang, as soon as they left. Whole Cake Island, they went to Wano, and now, like, currently, it's been something like a couple of weeks, right? Like, Luffy went to jail, he fought Kaido, it's been several weeks, um, I think, since he got there, because, like, the plan was for the revolution to be in a month or something. So, but, but, uh, Beiji over here went straight from Whole Cake and just set sail directly for Thriller Bark, based on this little cover arc. Yeah, So my guess is that, yeah, yeah, see what I mean? These never have been, like directly relating to the chapter at all. They're just sort of well, like the reason, stories that get told. That's that's very true, but the reason this is somewhat relevant, because I first thought when I saw this, I was like, oh wow, Reverie's still going on, but it, Reverie might actually certainly be over by this point. I, I can't quite remember if it ended, in fact, or not. Uh, because, like, we, we were told that war broke, or a fighting broke out between the two admirals and Sabo and the Revolutionary Army. I don't know if that cancelled it or not. I'd have to go back and check like, the timeline. Because there was a certain amount of days, I think, that Reverie was going on, and they were going to try to tackle a bunch of issues. I remember Abraham Lincoln or President Hamburg or whatever talking about that. Uh, let me know, people, if, if I'm wrong about this, but I think that was correct. And uh, I, I think we will get... I think we'll effectively get information along the lines of, like, what we got in the... When we got, got to um, Punk Hazard, and they're just like, oh, yeah... Uh, Aokinu and Aokiji fought here, and the island totally changed. Isn't that crazy? We kind of already got that with us just being told that Sabo fought the admirals. But I don't think very much information has come out besides no, that. We don't know whether so. Sabo's captured or whether the anything right. significant, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We'll find I'm out. I'm sure we'll get some more. Uh, probably after Wano ends, because we're kind of getting towards the end now, sort of. Um, that's my guess. That's my yeah. guess. So, mm-hmm. uh, back in Ringo... Mm. Uh, Zoro has just been offered a legendary blade, the blade of Lord Odin. Mm. Uh, one, one of his was, two. One was given to uh, Entrusted, 
I guess, to Momonosuke. Mm -hmm. yep. And the other where was that is entrusted right to Hiyori here. And the one she was entrusted to, she's giving to him, to Zoro. So uh, mm -hmm. we know that uh, Momonosuke will have a sword in the future as well. True. That's true. Uh, although, we, I mean, Momonosuke's young. The time travel thing's... I don't know exactly where well, we're going with Momonosuke's character, but I, probably just I mean, stay young. I feel like the sword, mm -hmm. now that it's been revealed that he has like a sword of his father, yeah, it's like, yeah. that's going to... He, he might not kill anyone with it, but he probably mm -hmm. will have it and do something well, ceremonial maybe at the end. Possible. Now, given the arithmetic, like Zoro's a three-sword guy. His other two swords are all well and good. Do you think there's any possibility that Zoro ends up with these two swords? Uh, and, you know, with all that and the Wado Ichibonji I, in his I would, mouth. I would say had. zero. Zero? Really? Zero. Well, it's just the fact that it's like Momonosuke is being set up to be like the the you know the new mm. the new breed uh, what do you call it the the, the next uh, shogun the next generation the new mm -hmm. lord odin following in his father's footsteps being the ally of lord luffy of lord luffy being the the ally <laughs> to luffy who is the emperor of wano and has well, that whole mm, place mm. you uh, know that's that's fair let me ask you this on that same front do you think that zoro will in fact keep the enma given to him by um by hiori here or will he stick with um, the the fucking whatever it's called. Uh, the Shusui. Ryuma sword. That, yeah, that's the one. Well, um, the the reason he has that is because he fought a zombie, and yep. the zombie gave it to him because he was mm -hmm. impressed. And it was like, hey, cool. It's a good sword. It's a good sword. Um, and he only needed that because the previous sword rusted, I think. In Yeah, it was rusted uh, after at the end of uh, Eni's Lobby by Rust Boy. So he needed a new sword. He doesn't need a new sword, but I guess he doesn't really give a shit which, which legendary blade it is, one way or the other. Yeah, that seems to be the case. He's willing to give it up, and, it seems, And this which is, is implied nice. to be, like, cooler, because it gave Kaido a scar, as was told last time. Well, now, if you're saying it's, like, a better sword, that... I mean, Zoro hasn't seen the Enma, so he doesn't really know if it's, like, necessarily better or worse, even if it did give, uh give Kaido the, the, the cut. I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just don't know. I could see Zoro potentially giving up the uh, the shoe sweep well, and taking he's, these he's, two. He's going to give or, it up um, mm -hmm. for politeness sake. Like, well, if you're going to give me a replacement, fine. Yeah. Like, if yeah. it turns out to be slightly worse, I'm sure he'll deal with it. But mm -hmm. narratively, I feel like there's no reason for it to not be a cooler sword. He'll, he'll yeah, look at it I and suppose. be like, ooh, the blade is so fucking well, sick. It, it, there's something kind of weird that, like, they want to give up the, the Blade Enma. Like, Shira, I, I keep wanting to call her Shira Hoshi, uh, but Hyori wants to give up her Enma Blade, presumably just a better sword, it, it seems, maybe, um, well, for the she, for the Shusui, which is just, it maybe just a worse sword, even though, like, no, Wano wants is, it more, it's more important. Well, yeah. No? I mean, it's more ceremonial. It's like I saying, guess it's historically this, speaking, is, this is like yeah. Jesus' sword. Like, I've got a really mm. cool sword. But this is like the holy sword of Jesus, and the country, and the, the, the hmm. country of America would really want this back stabbed in the hamburger statue. <laughs> so I guess it's like it's like saying that George Washington's sword is more important to us than I don't know, our like, Obama's sword <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> yeah, you know, Obama's yeah, got a pretty okay, nice sword. Okay. He, he sliced some and, and dices, you know, on occasion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we got well. Fair enough. <laughs> historical swords are pretty cool as well. well. That that's very true. That's incidentally the Enma and or maybe it was the other sword. They were saying at the beginning that like these are real swords, or at least at least one of them exists. I think it was Momonosuke's sword. So that's kind of cool. Maybe I'll go see that Nippon one of these days and kill Kaido with it. Um, all right. Well, in any case, we'll find out exactly which swords get shuffled. Oh, and I was just thinking. I have a, a slight thought that, you, you know how uh, Luffy got that one cursed sword at the beginning of this arc that's like sibling to Zoro's cursed sword uh, that he yes. has with him? I'm wondering, we know that Luffy's not going to keep that forever, obviously, but like maybe Zoro will give up his cursed sword and instead dual wield like Odin's no, two swords no, 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 going no, no. forward. I, think, I don't want that to happen, but I think if I'm just anything, saying maybe. I think if anything, mm -hmm. he's going to return the, the honorable mm -hmm. sword, like the, because um, I just uh, oh, and take Luffy's sword instead. Yeah, double the, cursed the, double swords because cur that would work for his like um, his three-headed demon 
thing that he does. I do really like his theme of like having cursed swords and just having stronger luck. That's always been really cool. Yeah, so it'll be it'll be he something cool. It'll be it'll be a very cool moment. Like it wouldn't be mm-hmm. a, a a thing of charity for Zora. He would look at the sword yeah, and yeah. and he'd be like, "Ah, this cursed sword's fucking sick though." And he throws <laughs> he throws the the you know the beloved sword back to Hiyori, and he just takes this <laughs> cursed piece of shit. And they're like, yeah. oh my god, you're fucking crazy. And he's like, hey, you're yeah. so cursed, dude. Double cursed. Eyes glint. Little sands blue. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that sounds cool, too. Lots of great fun options for Zoro and fun sword shenanigans. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that later. But now we take a trip down memory lane to... Uh, guys, you remember a little character named Trafalgar D. Waltel Law? Turns out he's just the most powerful character who's yeah. ever existed. I, all right, I, I, I yeah, had all right, to, go on. <laughs> I had to figure out. Like, I, mm-hmm. I wasn't sure what season, like, what happened. How yes. could this have happened? Yes. I he went was back. chained. They were torturing him. They were I like, "Fuck back, you, Law." I went yeah, back to yeah. check, and it seems mm-hmm. one of these chapters uh, was uh, out of order. It was shown as a flashback, yeah. and I didn't notice. Mm. So oh, that, that's right. That's the right. first thing we see. Back when Hawkins and Law, had, you know, Law. I also reread brothers. this entire section, by the way. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> go on. So go on. chapter f- nine, four, five. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hawkins demonstrates that he has his buddies as like mm-hmm. straw men, um, the power, so that he, voodoo he can't yep. be hurt. Yeah. But if you try to kill me, you'll kill your allies. The next thing that happens, we only see one page of that. Law mm-hmm. just goes, Ugh. just like, oh no. Then this is the flashback. Where Hawkins gets rid of the three, dumps mm-hmm. them on the ground. It's like, all right, I've completely released them. This is the the the, the deal. You'll come into like prison, and they'll go free. And the law says, do not tell anyone about me getting caught or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you know the the law pirates, the whatever they're called, heart pirates. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, they're free, and they're thinking, what's going on? Then the next thing we see, chapter. Oh yeah, that last chapter was um, 950 or 951. Yeah, that, was like, that was 951. Right, right. In chapter 950, we see the mm-hmm, present mm-hmm. like not a flashback. Law is chained up, presumably clearly in has cuffs on. Clearly has cuffs on. There's he's, no he's doubt. He's got his about arms it. crossed. He's bloodied yep. in the head, yep. and he's smiling. Um, Hawkins and, looking devilishly handsome, loving it. Yeah, loving he's it. got his crazy eye. It's like he's trying to get the words out, and Law is just sitting there smiling. He's not giving up the info. Mm-hmm. The next thing we see is this chapter. Yes, he's just he's just beat him. How do you do that? <sighs> oh, okay. Now this my my first reaction. My first reaction was a seething, in, surging rage, and I wanted to burn the whole world to ash because, of course, fucking law. Like even Luffy has to be freed by Jinbe and in fucking uh, Whole Cake Island, but of course Law can escape all on his own. Okay, but. But when you examine, just just to take this a little bit out of order, we cut, like, next page or whatever, as Law is walking away from the situation, there is a shadowy figure there, and Law specifically says, if letting me escape is part of some plan, I'll go along with it. Okay, so I I do not think that Law, through being literally Jesus Christ himself, Oda's favorite cock sleeve, One Piece fan, boy, boot dude... He actually was, in fact, freed by someone who betrayed Hawkins. And yeah. this scene is just us cutting to him, interrogating It is, it is Hawkins. a little strange that, yeah. like, this guy standing in the shadows appears mm-hmm. to be very far away from the action. Like, I don't know how he yes. managed to um, betray Hawkins or whatever mm-hmm. and then walk out of the cell, stand in the shadows just so Law could leave. Well, I, I think I let's be charitable. I, I think it's a totally understandable, and I think this is the most reasonable read that... Yes, Law was being tortured by Hawkins and other people. This, whoever this person is, came in, like, maybe maybe Hawkins stepped out for a second. This person freed Law, and then Law was like, okay, I'm gonna... And then he beats up Hawkins or whatever. He brings him in. He's cutting him up. He's And then this guy just walks outside to let Law finish his business and interrogate Hawkins before Law just decides to leave. That's a totally plausible way to read yeah, this situation. Yeah, I, I suppose. It just read a little mm-hmm. strangely. So this, it, it this did. person, it did. I was trying to figure out by the shape of their foot whether we have seen this person before. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. I, d- I don't think it's the tall head ninja man. I don't think it mm-hmm. is uh, uh, Yakuza Samurai Man. Yeah, that guy. Yep, I, I, I think, agree. I think because of the fact that during this chapter they say we've ne- we've not heard anything of the of what's his face. 
uh, the other samurai we were looking for. Mm -hmm. um, green? No, it wasn't green something. I forget. I'll, I'll uh, read yeah, it in a second. Yeah. But, like, I think it might be him. I don't know what he looks like, so I could, uh, you know... He's the only character uh, that we've been told about that we haven't seen. And there that's is, definitely uh, there's possible. There's a person in shadow right now, so... I'll say one person I think is actually even slightly more likely. This is my number one bet for who it is. When I when when we're, I was looking back at the chapter nine nine fifty, like the most recent time to now, who was in the room standing with Basil Hawkins? It was Deace Drake. It was Deace Drake. And remember the way before Deace before Drake ever joined the fucking kid pirates. Oh, sorry, the you know the the beast pirates. He was, like, fighting scra uh, that fucking whatever, scotch or whatever, to, like, get Kaido's attention. Maybe that was to join his crew, but we, like, uh, uh, Drake only became a pirate, like, begrudgingly and didn't even want to in the first place. So, I'm just saying that I think Drake has big reasons to betray Hawkins and to betray, like, the Beast Pirates. And he was the literally the last person in the room with Hawkins and Law and the way that Law says, like, oh, maybe this is some part of your plan, I'll go along with it, that that establishes, like, this person seems duplicitous or he doesn't understand. If Law just, like, didn't know who this guy was, if he was, like, some other samurai, I feel like he'd say something different. This seems like a double cross or, like, a grand betrayal. I'm just saying this seems the most likely. Yeah. I think it was Drake. I'm, I think I'm trying, it was Drake. I'm trying to find an image of DS Drake's mm -hmm. shoes. I went looking too. I, he's wearing pants and a cape, so the, the cape, cape seems consistent the cape so seems, far. Yeah, it could, it, but it, I mean, it could just it, be a samurai with robes or something. It could. No, be, we notice or, he's wearing shoes, not sandals, which samurai yeah. generally wear. So that's something. The the that's shoes something. are not very well defined, so mm -hmm. it could be mm -hmm. vague for that reason. Like, oh, you can't obviously tell that it's that it's him. Yeah. So I suppose mm -hmm. it's probably him. I hadn't thought of that, but of if course, if we could see more of his feet, we might be able to make. We a need reasonable to, we need distinction. We a good look at those feet. Make a good sniff. <laughs> it, we got to get in there. <laughs> if somebody has some of that and they could, like, prove us wrong or whatever, that might actually be helpful. So feel free to comment below if yeah. you uh, have, like, a link or something. That, but that'd anyway, be cool. the, yeah. what, what Hawkins is saying, this is, uh, mm, yeah, this is yeah. an interesting uh, bit here. So uh, Law says, what happened to the pirate alliance between Kid, Apu, and mm -hmm. yourself? This is something I wanted to know. Yep. And um, basically... It isn't that um, like strange. It's just sort of uh, Apu was working with Kaido. He just wanted to join him. Apu was straight up already on his team, despite being in these talks with Kid and Hawkins yeah. to form an alliance. So okay, so it, traitor. It's, it, it's it's good. I think that like not all of the 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 quote unquote worst generation have the same like uh, way of going about being a great pirate. If you know what I mean. Like, That's true. If you think it's about a, the mm. way Law and Luffy would go, would go mm -hmm. well, mostly Luffy or whoever, like, a yeah. lot of them care about, like, taking down the current, like, status quo. Maybe Apu mm -hmm. also does, but, like, he does it in a way where he, uh, you know, gets rid of his competition and rises yeah. through the ranks over years. Like, that's his plan. Like, it's good that they're not all the same guy. That's that's definitely true. But what this reveals to me is really that at first I was like, oh, no, Hawkins got cucked. But no, Hawkins got betrayed. So Hawkins still is a reasonably impressive character who uh, I mean, I don't even this doesn't even necessarily prove he would lose a one on one fight with law. It I really think this just means he was betrayed and backstabbed and like he's still intimidating. Apu, however, with this reveal of Apu, it really makes him seem like a bitch ass motherfucker. Like, like you said, he is no longer, like, a candidate for Pirate King. This guy is willing... He, we've always, He's always seemed like a really fun-loving guy. I think he just was given an invitation to join Kaido's crew, as everybody gets, basically, who's strong, and was like, yeah, that seems more fun. I don't really want to be, like, a big dick boy. I think I'll just be, like, you know, complicit in this alliance and just... Use the protection of Big Daddy Kaido so I can have fun and go do the stuff I want to do. And, it, it, you know, I really thought Scratch from Napu had a cool design, and, and he still does, and might have a cool character arc, and he still might, but this is a big disappointment of, I, well, I, I think, guess he's not that badass. No, no man. I think this is this is interesting. No? I'd rather him be, mm -hmm. like, he's more, like, more on the vein of, of Blackbeard being, like, a piece of shit pirate. 
That's true. You, you, That's you, true. You, you love to hate him, but it doesn't mean he he's going to be an un. These guys. Oh, it doesn't mean God. he's necessarily going to be an uninteresting character. I, I think. Oh, well, that's true. He's just not like a. He's not really like a an A lister anymore. He's uh, you know, he's willing to like be controlled by other people. It just makes you seem like a bitch. Well, which we don't is, know okay. the whole story. I mean. Yeah, that's true. It, that's it, it true. Could always like be revealed that Apu had a secret other thing, or like he he you know he runs away when it's very convenient to do so. Unlike yeah. um, Kid, who, unlike which, Kid and fucking who, who his Naruto's voice. his way into like an early grave. Uh, I, man, imagine a, a Scratchman Apu and Kid meeting later. If this is all true, uh, and you know he knows that he fucking betrayed him, Kid is gonna tear his fucking asshole inside out. And I cannot wait to see that happen. I hope that happens. Uh, he's going to be, be he's going to need a, a thorough retuning after that. And indeed he will. And let's let's just examine here. Yeah, um, Hawkins here. Hawkins, you know, he's a he's a he reads the tarot cards. He just goes with what he needs to do. He wanted to be pirate king, man. But like as he says right here, he was in a situation where escape chance zero percent, victory chance zero percent. But if I submit to survive. That I had a 40% chance to do, so I just took the only reasonable option. He didn't betray anybody. He just decided, okay, I've got to do what it takes to survive in these situations. Maybe protect his crew, too. So, uh, What do you think you about, about you the idea of, like, Hawkins' mm -hmm. tarot card percentage readings being not, like, completely mm -hmm. concrete? Yeah. Uh, you know what I think about that? I think that, give it, this right now is the most emotive Hawkins has ever been and him being like look man uh, he's kind of when you they talk about this in like in Game of Thrones this happens and in lots of other stories where prophecy is a factor when you make a prophecy you almost become a slave to that prophecy because now that you quote unquote know what's going to happen or at least what's very likely you're almost completely ruling out the possibility of doing other things so even in a situation where like Luffy was given these statistics for example of like Survive, victory 0%, escape 0%, submit to survive, that's like 90% chance you'll be okay. Luffy probably would just be like, that's bullshit, don't believe it, whatever. But Hawkins, yeah. Hawkins does believe in these things. And so he's kind of a slave and to whatever the cards say. It, if you think mm -hmm. about it, it's like, these are, he probably has to call upon, like, like mm -hmm. he has to shake the magic eight ball and he has to ask the question, mm -hmm. can, yeah. I uh, can I escape? Can I, uh, you know, fight and win? You know, yep. zero, zero. But he never asks it, you know, can I do a funny dance and, like, make <laughs> Kaido laugh and then I can get off scot-free? Like, That's he, true. He, he That's wouldn't true. ask a, such a silly question. And mm -hmm. I don't think uh, the, the, the tarot cards would tell him to do, you know, something. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So there's only so many things he can think of to do, I'm He assuming. may be a prison of his own worldview. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. you got to well, be maybe yeah, I think that's interesting. complete stupid. Maybe you got to go full Luffy, turn your brain off, literally. <laughs> You know, though, I'll, <laughs> that, that's fair. But you know what I'll say? Actually, that's a great, like, Luffy would, his incredible crazy tactics, turning off his brain when fighting Enaru, incredible. That's, yeah, that, that's kind of innovative thinking to, you want. not be able to read what Luffy is doing when he turns his literal brain off. <laughs> Indeed. I, I kind of feel at this moment, we might find out more, I already feel reasonably satisfied with the little arc that Hawkins has had now. I want to see more of him. I think he's got a cool power. I want to see him do more stuff. I'm just saying, like, in my, my mind, I have a little checklist of, like, supernovas have certain amount of interest points they have to read, or, or I'm going to be kind of pissed that Oda didn't do enough with them. I already feel at this moment, like, Hawkins has reached that threshold for me. So, everything from here is gravy for Hawkins, as far as I'm concerned. I, I understand why he made the choices he did, um, like, he seemed like a pretty badass guy. He's got cool powers. I like his design. I like seeing him around. Um, even if he doesn't have a big role in the rest of the arc, I feel satisfied. Now, that is not true for most of the characters in Wano right now. All these, like, little samurai guys who get their little one-offs. I mean, like, that's the kind of concept I try to articulate on this show, where we get all these characters introduced and all their character designs, but they don't get, like, a little arc. Hawkins has now had a little arc, and I feel satisfied. Um, even even Kappa I, Boy, he's had a little bit of one, uh, so that's that's something. But there's lots of characters who have not had that, and when there's an expectation set that doesn't get met, that's when my dissatisfaction can can become a factor. Yeah, you know, I was thinking mm -hmm. about the Kappa Boy and mm -hmm. how his uh, tragic Kawamatsu. backstory was a little sub story and not like yeah, yeah. substance story. I mm -hmm. didn't feel it. I feel like 
that's like once he has like something happen in the present Mm -hmm. that uh you know with the context of that backstory yeah gives it more weight then i think i will care about him but if that never happens then that backstory isn't going to cut it which is that's very true and which is why it's always a good idea to reread an arc once it's done and be like wow you know oda really he had a uh, there was a purpose to these pieces and maybe some things didn't have a purpose they just got forgotten but that's fair to criticize but it's fair to that's why if you just like skypea my favorite arc if you just read it moment to moment you could be like oh what the fuck are these who are these fucking Shandians guys? They're not. They're just a bunch of Indians. They suck. They don't do anything cool. But when you finally get that Calgara flashback of Calgara and Norland, it's such a gigantic coom of all these factors swirling into one. And that all culminate in Luffy ringing the bell. That means so many things to so many different characters. Just that. That's that's the good shit right there. So, yep. Always something to keep in mind. But um, okay. Let Let's move on. Uh, here's yeah. Hawkins is just yeah. saying. Want people to join the crew. What happens, blah, blah. What happened mm. to the rest of the, the, the crew? So Kid, mm-hmm. Killer, they fought him. They both collapsed. And then yep. the rest of Kid's crew, um, yeah. if you want to save your caption, then do this and do that. So yep. they're just yeah. under the servitude of Orochi. So they're probably like mm-hmm. around. They might be all on Onigashima at the moment. Like we'll see in slavery. someday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so potential like little group of allies to find. Oof, that's rough, man. That's r- but yeah, that's true. Once once kids out there, kid is. I'm sure, like I said before, I still think kid is 100 percent gonna play some part in the final battle, and uh, him probably show up with his crew, be a couple extra troops to help out. It would just be the right the I right think, way to do I it. I think it I would think. be it would be pretty uh, obvious to have like his mm-hmm. crew trapped trapped on Onigashima and kid going along with the mm-hmm. the invasion, just because it's convenient to him. And so mm-hmm. he ends up helping in that way. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I predict will happen. And, uh, and we'll see. Maybe there will be a moment where like, it looks like the battle is lost. All their forces are decimated. Kaido stands over Luffy, about to defeat him. And then at that crucial moment, that's when Kid re- shows back up. Not to help out, just to get revenge on Kaido. And does some sick snipe. And then he teams up with Luffy and they take him down. Ooh, I could see lots of cool things happening like that, but but who knows? Who knows? He just, we'll he just drops a giant Acme anvil on his head. <laughs> oh, that's so kid. That's so kid. But then, like we said, Law pieces out. He's gotten the information from Hawkins and says, uh, thanks for letting me escape, mysterious figure. I'm going along with your plan. And we've got six days until the raid on Onigashima, so we're getting down to it here. Yeah, so... Uh... Luffy's just in the prison, I guess, punching metal and getting more tutelage from uh, Hyogoro saying, just punch it, just do it, just get strong, get real strong. We will get, I have no doubt, we will get a big, a big hockey-based fight, kind of like Luffy and uh, a fucking favorite character, I forget his name, Mochi Man. Oh my god, what's his name? I can't remember. Uh, Help me out. What's his name? Uh, I'm thinking Bartholomew Kuma. I can't think of Oh, my God. Uh, fucking uh, uh, flip his, dog flip his... tooth. Katakuri. Katakuri. That was the, that was the observation hockey fight. Guys, I, th- I... I, think, I think we don't actually like Katakuri. I think we've been oh, no. this whole time. <laughs> this will be the armament hockey arc battle. And uh, I'm glad that, Luv- that Oda has written in, like, something. If, it was, if there was no... Every Shonen series, one of the main features is, like, character progression, getting skills, getting new powers. This is what Oda's decided to do with the New World stuff. And, uh, you know what? It's working out okay. It's a lot better than, like, Punk Hazard, where Luffy just defeats, you know, uh, Caesar with, like, generic gear third punches. That's okay. This this is the shit I want to see. So I'm, I'm very happy with it. But uh, Luffy's training, five days until the raid in Onigashima, and Luffy gets to rematch with Kaido. We will see. We'll see. Right. So, uh, Amigasa Village, this is where all the main people are mm-hmm. gathering to talk about stuff. He sends a message to shipbuilders to say, uh, it's got two lines on the snake, and then they get it. I don't know yep. why he hasn't said that already, but they're, they're building. Frankie's there. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> yep, um, there they go, building ships. The, the, then we've got the, the weapon preparation squad in the prison. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that necessarily means because they're getting I think the they're weapons preparing from guns Ringo. from the factory and oh, stuff. Oh, you know, yeah, just just general mm-hmm. things. Yeah, weapon yeah. Ga- cannons. Yeah, uh, stuff from the prison, stuff from the Ringo uh, sword recovery places. Yep. These are all yep. the the yakuza members doing this. I, it's, mm-hmm. I see. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and they're getting the rebels together. And uh, yeah, this is the explanation of the two lines. The yeah, long the, last. And the snake, mm. which we I, I, it still feels like it could have been like a prank. Like, I mean, I agree. It not could yesterday. be covert ops. Uh, yeah, it, it definitely could have been. But uh, again, it like in a in frankly in a more complicated, more high level intellectual series, I think it could be a misdirection of some kind. I am kind of tempted just to take it on its face because it is One Piece, yeah. and they say that it was Yasui. Like all the emotional, my genre savviness is telling me that this is just legit. And yeah. like, if there was just one panel, uh, maybe there was, maybe I missed it. If there was one panel of Yasui just slipping a note to uh, a bear man, to bear man at any point, I would have been like, no problem, hundred percent down, understood. Yeah. I just don't think that exists. It's just, so it's a little, it's just a little, mm -hmm. like. You, we at the time when that chapter came out, you were, maybe mm -hmm. it was that that was like supposed to throw us through a loop. Like the fact that they lied about escaping Hawkins, mm -hmm. and they also happened to have this thing. Right, like in that one thing, they're lying about one thing, but they're not lying about the other. Th like that's why I think there's so much conflation and, and confusion. Yeah, uh, but yeah, it, so, it, mm -hmm. it seems to just be the thing. The, the the idea is that the snake has feet now, and it's a lizard, and therefore mm -hmm. it's. You, uh, it used to be representative of the snake named port, and now it's representative of the lizard named port. So it's a different port. Fair enough. Fair enough. So and it makes know, sense. I, it, it's possible. It is possible that this is still a betrayal, and that like when the offensive is launched, because I these plans never go according to plan. They always go wrong. Basically, maybe this will turn out to be a crucial thing that Hawkins will reveal was like a plan of his and Kaido's, or something that makes some difference. Uh, or maybe it won't be that at all, and it'll, this will be the last we hear of it. Although, right now, like, the whole point of this is don't launch from this port that's named Snake Port or whatever. Launch from this one named Lizard. That has to be relevant in some way for all this to make a difference. And right now, we do not know why Yasuie said to do this other than, like, some enemy must have found out about the plan that like that was the port and so Yasui is trying to avoid that from getting captured it's a they're like avoiding a bad thing happening so it's kind of hard to exactly understand tangibly how much that matters right now but maybe this will become clear during the raid which i think is coming up pretty soon and yeah. uh yeah I, I don't know i don't know we'll, we'll see we'll see anyway we got the whole gang here we got mm -hmm. uh, the most of the nine red scabbards Denjiro is the name of the samurai they haven't found yet. That's haven't right. Had That's right. Any information about where he is, what he's doing? Mm -hmm. uh, he could also be in Onigashima because that's the could last be. place they go. I don't expect them to be exploring the island much after this. I think we've pretty much seen uh, all we're gonna see for the most part, except for Onigashima. So, then, here's some interesting things. So that 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 whole. Uh, theory about the, the island being made by a, a giant dragging things together mm, doesn't indeed. make too much sense anymore now that we see a cross section of the island where it's really yep. big <laughs> that's it's very really true tall. now i we've already seen the map of what wano generally looks like across it but this now this is is absolutely fascinating this is the kind of shit i love so wano is in fact an island that looks like it's several i don't know thousand meters like above the surface of the water now japan of course is an, a volcano nation an island nation formed billions of years by volcanoes like moving across the pacific bottom of the ocean or whatever and uh this i presume is probably built in a similar way through some big volcanic activity and it made this big fucking spout in the middle of the water and it's 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 so cool there's like a ring of stone clearly around the edge over which the waterfalls flow down to the normal sea level and this is why you have to climb a waterfall to get into Wano and then they're telling us of course that there's also another secret entrance that's been carved out or something where you go in through the waterfall from a certain location and you can get pulled up through Port, Port Mogura which of course is under Kaido control right now so that's not much of a way to get in um, you know, yeah. unless you're an ally of his, which is, uh, which is pretty sick. And I, I love getting information about like the unique geography of the different islands this way. It makes the island feel so special and interesting in ways like Skypea is, and even Dressrosa surrounded by its big, like rocky, you know, whatever things surrounding it. Uh, re really, really cool. Really, really cool. And yeah, so clearly that little skull island, I mean, I guess it could be a monster like fused with the island, but seems very unlikely at this point. 
probably just a silly looking rock that's maybe been carved to look like a demon head or something. So there you go. There goes that theory. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 reading back the thing. I don't think mm -hmm. this actually goes into their plan. I think this this might just be an explanation of how it works. But if it Correct. is their plan, mm -hmm. uh, it seems to be that they want to go all the way out of Wano and then come up through the middle. Mm. That doesn't seem like I, Why I happen to, would they do that? So like, I, I happen to think that, it, yes, it's got a little confusing. Kinemon says, let us begin the strategy meeting. I think then we completely cut away. It, it even says, this might be a sudden revelation, says the narrator, unrelated to anything that was just being said. Oh. But just so you know, there's this extra way to enter uh, Wano through this secret port. I thought this was him speaking. I, I, I see why you think that. I do not think that is the case because it doesn't have anything to do with the plan, as far as I can tell. Okay, so it cuts from, like, as soon as he says that, and says, like, you know, mm -hmm. the narrator telling us. That's the what way, I think. This yeah. is how uh, Onikashima works, haha. Or uh, yep. how Wano works. <laughs> That's my go, theory, anyway. And then we go to this other place. I don't know where it is. Well, it's um, in Port Mogura, deep down in the bowels of, uh, of Wano, at the bottom, at sea No, level. no, no, the, the, this, this next panel, this place where there's the children, and Apu is dancing around. Oh, oh, yes. Well, I, well that, I think I believe if we, on the previous page, we see there's an elevator bringing up, we see somebody getting off and they ride oh. on this thing. I think that just goes to the top of that oh, entrance. Oh, you know, now I get it. It's, mm -hmm. this is Apu returning. Yes, to Hakumai, where the, where the port okay. is. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Okay, I, now I get it. So uh, mm -hmm. Apu has returned to Hakumai. He rings Kaido on, on, on the little snail and he says, ha ha, <laughs> I'm back. He's jumping around jolly, jovial. Now, it doesn't and look like Kaido expected him to be back, but he is for the for the ceremony, the Golden Kagura. Going to be a cool ceremony. I bet it's going to look really dope. And, uh, uh, I mean, right, yeah, we're seeing him be like, the ones who refuse to join your crew don't know what they're missing out on. So he is clearly loving being, like, a subordinate. He he really, he's like the he's Capone Gang Beast. He's definitely yes man right now. I don't know whether he's being real. He could I think be. he's being real. He came back for a dope party, you know? He didn't even tell him to come back. He did on his own. So it seems like he's uh, just loving mm. being on this crew and having fun. Maybe. Or maybe there's more to it. That definitely could be the case. But this, Jesus Christ, this is the first time we've seen Apu, I think, on screen in a million fucking years since we saw him answer the phone a while ago. And he's back. So, I mean, I, I think the reason that he's back, uh, like kind of narratively, is so that he can be part of of the shenanigans that go down on, uh, you know, during the raid. If he wasn't here, and, like, let's say Kaido gets destroyed, Apu would be like, yikes, glad I wasn't there for that. I'm just going to go be my own pirate again? Yeah, that's going to be great. But uh, here he is, so he can be part yeah. and parcel. So We're going to get some uh, backstory. On, on his ship, mm -hmm. uh, presumably, he has brought back the numbers. I think he's a number as well, based on what the people are no, saying. No, no, I think, like, no, the... Like, he's dancing, but, like, the girl is looking up, and she says, who is that? It's a number from Onigashima. We need to get away from here fast, or we will be eaten. He doesn't look mm -hmm. like he's going to eat people. I mean, maybe he does, but... Well, uh, okay, I mean, it's it's a... Well, first of all, okay, King saying the numbers have returned. Yes, they're attending the banquet. Queen doesn't like that because they have drinking problems, so they're going to be annoying. And we see, Jesus Christ, these gigantic, horrible-looking monsters. Maybe they're all dinosaurs. They look absolutely terrifying. Th right now... This is the first time I felt intimidated by the Beast Pirates since Jack first showed up on um, on uh, uh, fucking Zoe and like just destroyed the whole village with just one of the executives of, of the Beast Pirates. Now these guys look terrifying. I I love it. They look intimidating because right now Queen and King and Jack as well a little bit have kind of just not been doing a lot. But these guys look like they mean business. And by the way, uh, I, what I'm taking this to mean, the reason why I think Apu is a number as well as these guys is because so far, we know the Jack, uh, the, the Beast Pirates are like playing card themed. You've got the King, you've got the Queen, you've got uh, maybe Kaido's the Ace. I don't know what he is exactly. Um, Joker was obviously Joker, you know, Doflamingo. But in playing cards, you got the numbers. You got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I think that this is just the like, the lower ranking guys after the executives, after King and Queen and whatnot. And these guys are like the next rung down, but still yeah, super but powerful. Like, I feel and I like, think Apu is one of them. I feel like these giant beasts mm -hmm. would be the numbers and Apu would be one of the headliners along with uh, Hawkins and Drake. I mean, well, that's true. But just consider the fact that Hawkins, politically speaking and strategically, 
was uh, if if this I don't know this is a fact, but if it's true that Apu um uh, or, or that if it's true that numbers is a rank uh, is like a rank as opposed to like a grouping of like these big scary monster men then i could totally see apu having been given this higher rank of a number which is just below the executives based on the fact that he like helped subdue law and brought hawkins into the pirate alliance due to his like scheming to get these guys in a place where kaido you know could do a suicide jump and find them and, and subjugate them I, I could be wrong. I could be totally I, wrong about I, that. I, I, I feel like it's it's mm -hmm. it would be a little pointlessly confusing to have these big guys who all look kind of similar, the giant, the big scary teeth, mm -hmm. um, to be like, you know, nine numbers, and then a tenth one is this tiny little uh, musician. Well, he is powerful. He is a very scary, I mean, well-known guy. That, you know, that goes without saying, but like, mm -hmm. it feels like it would be thematically annoying. That that is possible. That like is possible. A, like aesthetically, like you, you line them all up, and you got like you know the the the, <laughs> the, 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 the the all the playing cards, and then this tiny little playing card. Maybe he's the Joker. Wait, no, Joker maybe. is the Joker. <laughs> um, maybe I don't know. Maybe he's the two. Maybe he's the two of the numbers. I I'm just saying it. Uh, I mean, if if my analysis is correct, that's my guess. Uh, but also, I'll say that it reminds me very much of remember Capone from Last Arc. He was the Rook of the, uh, of, like, the, whatever the executives were called or whatever, of the big mom pirates. And I think Apu could fill a very similar spot as one of the numbers, as, like, kind of an executive, too. But, again, just a guess. We'll find oh, out. You know, you know what, why I was, yeah. I was, uh, mostly hesitant is because yeah. these kids, right, mm -hmm. they're saying, it's a number from Onigashima. They're looking over at Apu and the numbers, and they're saying, oh, it's a number. Mm -hmm. I don't know why these kids would know Apu as a number if these other giant beasts like if they like heard hmm. tales of these giant numbers they're gonna eat you like seven eight nine oh my god like jesus <laughs> christ well yeah uh, i mean again that's th possible this, this, that's this possible little guy like they wouldn't immediately like be able to identify him as a number unless they were up on like all the news maybe there's something they know like numbers are the only ones who could ride the elevator but that's probably not true I, I don't know i don't know but we'll, we'll find out and the, the last thing i'll say is one of the things that I've been concerned about that you've heard me say many times is that, like, the Beast Pirates don't seem scary enough. They seem just, like, goofy. Most of them fail at what they're trying to do. They're not particularly intimidating. And, and, and like, King, Queen, and Jack, they've done some intimidating things, but, like, I want to see more of each of them to really show... Not that I, I like them all as characters, mostly, but I want specifically them to be scary and intimidating as executives. This is a fucking Yonko crew. His top guys should be fucking intimidating like Katakuri. Having an influx of these guys, I think, is going a long... Because everybody on Wano right now has kind of been cast as, like, goofy. These guys are an untapped element, and they look scary. I want these... These guys could be exactly the sort of thing I've been looking for. An influx of the truly scary members of the yes. Beast Pirates, and that is just what I've been asking for, so... So much of looks good. the other crew has been, like, either completely uh, mm -hmm. stupid, like yep. half-animal things that can be easily uh, taken over by mm -hmm. Kibidango or whatever. Yep. Um, yep. Or they've just been kind of bland-looking dinosaur people. I don't Indeed. know whether these numbers are also, like, devil fruit people, but they look more like... Yeah. Like, um... Uh, Monsters? They've all got ho yeah, they've all got, like, horns like Oz did. Yeah, that's true. Does. They could I, be, my... like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some sort of offshoot species of giant. I've just got a guess. Again, no idea if this is true or not, but here's my guess is that these are just... Like, all the smiles we've seen have been kind of fuck-ups and goofy guys for the most part. These guys might be the most, like, maybe when smiles go right, they go really right. And these mm. are, like, the top experiments of the They got the, a big, toothy smile. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Uh, or maybe they have devil fruits. Who could say? But they look fucked up. They don't really look like just normal devil fruit users necessarily. But they could be. They could be. So, I don't know, man. I, I guess we'll just fucking find out. But I, I really like... This is a very positive sign for me and the, and the final battle that's coming up. But oh, let's let's move on. So here we go. And we've got uh, Big the Mom biggest, and Kaido hanging the big out. Thing, yeah. uh, the big thing that is... It is a resolve the situation. Mm -hmm. that Big Mom and Kaido are no longer fighting. They're laughing. Yep. And not only are they laughing, 
they're going to form a pirate alliance. The Queen is very confuzzled by this news, but uh, they say we'll go all out after we take over the world together. So they're not even saying, would there some specific thing we got to do? Maybe, you know, they'll beat up the pirates. They're saying we will rule like two. This is huge news. Two Yonkos have formed a long term alliance, just like fucking Luffy and Kid or Luffy and Law, basically. Um, this is, yeah. if the world found out, this would be front page news across the planet if people found out about this, which they will eventually. This is a big deal. This is a yeah. big fucking deal. I'm, I'm really wondering what is going to come of this. Like, it, it's like the worst possible thing that could happen in terms of how do we beat Kaido. Correct. Because now he has my Big Mom on his side. The Big Mom pirates are around. Now that they're, like, not going to be kicked off by King, mm -hmm. they can come up through the elevator themselves, and then yeah. the big mom pirates will be here as well. So it's oh like, boy. like now, what I, the fuck's gonna I, happen? This, okay, now this absolutely does raise my issue, that is, we already had a big mom arc, I'm done with that, can we move on to Kaido things now? I don't really want to deal with more big mom stuff, and if it crews around, it's like, oh, Jesus Christ. I hope they play a much more minor role, but just the fact that big mom is here makes such a huge difference if the raid goes on and she and her crew are still around. And at this point, like, Otis basically just said, like, now we have to deal with the fact that Big Mom is here as well. Now, I think, if nothing else, what we are going to get from this arc is, remember in the in the jail, uh, when Luffy was trying to escape from Big Mom, Big Mom did her punches, Luffy was not able to deal with them, he, like, got destroyed, he couldn't do anything. I think we will get the moment where, as a payoff to that buildup, Luffy will activate his now advancing armament hockey defensive shield stuff, and he will, in fact, be able to deflect Big Mom's punches. This will be like the, the power-up payoff to Big Mom being here. It's just that Big Mom was never necessary for that to be something that Luffy did. So I'm still like, I mean, this is a cool development politically, uh, in terms of like the oh the challenges the crew needs to overcome, but what's the end game here? Where are we going with this? I, I, I just I don't mean, know. I think I, I think the 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 obvious conclusion is that Kaido mm -hmm. isn't gonna be beat in the, at the end of Wano. I Aww, feel like this well, this is gonna be another situation where they mm -hmm. get pretty close, but dang it, they just have to get out of there, and then. Big Mom and mm -hmm. Kaido are now chasing them to Elba for where. Wherever. I think that's definitely likely to be the outcome. Um, and then, like, Big yeah. Mom and Kaido are chasing Luffy, who is trying to become the Pirate King. Yep. Shanks is doing something with, like, the people in Reverie and the Revolutionary mm -hmm. Army is probably fighting or being destroyed. Yep. Uh, Blackbeard is... Uh, you know, chuckling, and he's going to jump in at the perfect moment to steal something. That's what he does, uh, yep. It's yep. all coming to a head. So, uh, it's going to be exciting. I don't, That's I, damn right. I, I just don't know what the end of Wano is going to be. Like, if Kaido's still here, mm -hmm. maybe they're going to, like, chase him out of Wano, but, like, hmm, I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, we have to, at the end of this arc, this isn't like Whole Cake Island. This isn't like Totland, which is ruled by Big Mom, and the people are relatively happy. The end of this arc has to be that Kaido and Orochi are dethroned and kicked out. Maybe Orochi could become benevolent in some... I mean, maybe that could happen. But, like, he was he was part of the coup that killed Momonosuke's father and decimated yeah, Wano. No he cannot remain as king of Wano at the end of this arc. There's yeah, just I, no I way. Think, I think maybe the fact that there is Orochi and Kaido is so that we do have a character that we can definitively destroy, dismantle... Mm. Dethrone. Yeah, maybe. Um, so Momonosuke I don't. I don't see Kaido being. Wano, we we should not then... forget. Uh, sorry, we we should not forget Hawkins' words earlier in this chapter. The Yonko are not like you and me. Uh, he was saying to Law, they are so much stronger than us. They are so much better than us. And I think that applies to Luffy too. Luffy's making some strike. Luffy couldn't do shit against Big Mom last arc. He barely survived, like, a couple of punches of hers and just had to run away. That's the only way he could deal with it. Sure, he barely beat her first lieutenant, Katakuri. That was the person he was barely able to beat. Forget the Yonko. Alone, he cannot defeat a Yonko. If he does, we've just fucked up the power scaling for all of One Piece until the very end of it. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't know what's going to happen at the end. But Kaido has uh, to lose. He has to be kicked out he, in some way. Well, here, here's the thing. Here's yeah. my big 
big brain thought. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Orochi is fucking up Wano, and he's doing all these deals with the world government. Right. He's the one, like, saying this and that and selling weapons and all that. Kaido is involved, I'm sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But what if, if we dethrone Orochi and Momonosuke mm-hmm. is on the throne and Wano is, like, taken, mm-hmm. um, that we just somehow work out a deal with Kaido so that he doesn't fuck with things? Or, <laughs> I, you know, I really can't think of, like, what this could entail, but I'm thinking, like, Kaido, Big Mom, they obviously hate the Straw Hats. Yep. So the Straw Hats are going to have to get the fuck out of there. But they don't necessarily hate the people of Wano, do they? they no, they I, don't hate them. And, like, if they're, do, if they're giving them a good deal, maybe things could be smoothed out, but it would still be sort of iffy. Hey, all I'm saying about that is, remember when uh, Baron Tamago, on the, at the end of Fishman Island, spoke to Big Mom on the phone and said, uh, Hey, just so you know, yes, Luffy ate all your candy that you were supposed to get, all your delicious, whole, you know, Fishman Island candy, but we can just take this treasure in trade, which is a beneficial deal for us. Like, this totally makes sense. Like, we could have peace. Big Mom unequivocally said, who the fuck do you think? I am a pirate. I take, I take, I take, I do not negotiate. Yeah. And is Kaido going to be the one who's like, oh, yeah, that's a reasonable deal. We can totally yeah, do that. You know. Seems unlikely. That's all I'm saying. Oof. I think I think then that's, you know, very unlikely. Mm-hmm. I think it will have to be something like Big Mom and Kaido. They're, they're in, like, they could be convinced to leave somehow. Gets, I yeah. don't think they could be convinced, but maybe they could be drawn away. I've got, yeah, exactly. You know what? I've got an idea. Because there's another idea going on here. I mean, for some reason, Big Mom says to Kaido here, he's like, hey, the banquet's going to be in the fire Festival night, blah, blah, blah. Big Mom does say, it'll be our anniversary. Um, what anniversary are they talking about? Let's not forget the well-beloved theory that three, uh, that, that Big Mom's uh, second, third, and fourth triplet children, including Katsukuri, are the children of Kaido. We know they knew each other. They were on the same crew a long time ago. Is this is this leading towards that belief? Maybe Kaido will leave to go be king of Totland alongside Big Mom. I, I don't oh know. I don't God. know. But maybe it's possible. Something's got to convince him to leave. <laughs> what's going to happen when Kaido meets Pound D Pussy? Oh, my God. <laughs> Who could Big, win uh, such a? Who could beat such a powerful guy? Pound <laughs> is um, the strongest. Do you think man in the whole world? You know, in in the new world, people have died. I think Pound is dead. I think he's dead for real at this point. Killed by oven, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, that's pretty it's, brutal. It's pretty fucking. Brutal. I mean, yeah. The time, I think he we was haven't seen him. Like, there's since. no way he's dead or like whatever. Because of things, but you know, people have been dying more and more as one piece has gone on. People have been quote unquote dying. I think it was really just Pedro that ruined it a little bit for a while there. That like by exploding, yeah. we, he, we more we than three times. Him. Oh yeah, that's true. He survived a bunch of them. Uh, y- you can't blame us, I think, for being skeptical. I mean, we we're we're scholars of One Piece. We know how nobody died in One Piece. Basically, all yeah, Mister Eleven died in Alabasta. That was like a barely named character. He did. He was like the only character who died throughout like most of early One Piece. People say that Zoro killed the Whiskey Peak bounty hunters. I don't think that's fucking true. Uh, I think he just you know beat him up sword blast style, and then at the end. Like, who really died? It was Ace and Whitebeard dying. Ace and Whitebeard dying is what really was like, okay, people are starting to die. But that was, like, a big event, so it's different from some kind of relatively inconsequential character, like Pound D. Pussy, uh, which is his official canon name, I believe, that's been that's on the wiki. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, it's just it's just been built into us to be skeptical. I, I mean, I'll always say it, Pell. Pell was the worst. <laughs> he should have... The fact that he survived made no difference in the plot. Zero difference other than, hooray, we got, like, a perfect happy ending. That's, like, the only difference. Um, Even though earlier in Alabasta, I almost forgot, these four warriors were fighting Crocodile. They drank this potion that gave them super strength, but they didn't have hockey, so they couldn't hurt Crocodile at all. Anyway, and they just die. They just die as a result of drinking that. But they were literally nameless. They were, like, the Royal Guard or something. Some elite soldiers or something. So... It just, 
I don't know, man. It's it, there's there's some back and forth on this, but important characters ish dying just like never happened until until way later. So I don't know. Virgo and Monet are dead, guys. We're over that. Poundy Pussy's probably dead. Uh, Mister Two is not dead, so there's another strike against it. But this is this has just been an ongoing thing. Eh, that's One Piece, baby. So what do you think? Anything else about the chapter? Uh, Big um, Mom and Kaido I, together forever. It was forever. a good chapter. I feel I feel it was. Uh, excited about what happen what will happen in the future. This you know, was it's, a it's very always one of those chapter. like despite how many times we think, hmm, what are the possibilities? Mm -hmm. I didn't think that they would just form an alliance. I know. I I thought. I mean, my, yeah. My last contention was Big Mom will somehow leave and not be able to get back in because I did not think Oda was going to commit this hard to Big Mom being there, but he fucking did. And again, long term in One Piece, this move makes perfect sense to me because of their history, because of like the way that Luffy's kind of being built up as like this guy who's antagonizing but not necessarily defeating all the Yonko. I think he'll go on to antagonize. Well, okay, actually, we've almost hit max capacity. There's only Big Mom, uh, Kaido. We already know he has beef with Blackbeard. And Shanks is the only other one who remains. Like, yeah. he's already friends with Whitebeard's and, boys and, who aren't young And the only, thing, the only yeah. thing is that one, like, cover arc where Bartolomeo mm -hmm. attacked one of Shanks's uh, oh, yeah. territories. Yep, that's true. So there's there's no necessary, like, n n not necessarily any beef between them, but mm -hmm. they're, they're going to fight. God, I can't wait for the Davy back fight with Shanks. <sighs> That's It'll my be... big dream. I want a Davy back fight Ooh. with a serious pirate. Oh my god, that would that would that would be such an amazing payoff. Like ten year, twenty years later to the initial Davy back fight with with Foxy, that would be so cool and would be such an appropriate way to handle a conflict between Shanks and Luffy. And maybe at the very end, what happens is Luffy miraculously wins the Davy back fight against Shanks, and Shanks is about to give him like the last piece he needs. And at the last fucking second, he gets fucking assassinated by Blackbeard, who swoops in and steals the last piece of the treasure, and then it becomes a race to the end of the Grand Line with Blackbeard. Damn. Now we're talking big league shit. That's, of course, going to be after Elbaf, which is going to be the Shanks arc, calling it now the Conqueror's Hockey arc. Oh my god, I can't wait! I'm getting so excited for the future of One Piece! This is exactly where it should be, given what we've seen so far. I'm getting intimidated by the Beast Pirates, Kaido and Big Mom are together. I know that we're going to focus on Kaido a lot. We're going to learn about the Rocks Pirates. We're going to learn about their history. Shanks is involved. Reverie's going to end at the end of the arc. We're getting close to the end. Only five days until the raid begins, which we know is going to take forever. But, oh my god, I, I'm so excited for the future. It's great. This is this is peak stuff. You, yes. you, you, you got to deal with the beginning of an arc, which wasn't terrible, no. It's just we've all got a hot anticipation for, for what's going to come later. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm stoked as shit, people. So, sorry to keep you waiting on this chapter, but luckily for you, there was no chapter the week after this. So, the fact that this is coming out now, you're welcome for filling up your week with more One Piece talk. And uh, we'll try to do it faster anyway. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we've been, like... Uh, busy time. Every time. Busy times. Every time I'm free, Nate's busy. Every time yeah, Nate's yeah, yeah. free, I'm busy. But, uh, but that being said, it's all Gibbs' fault. Just 100% on this guy right here. Uh, send him to the Fun brig, I say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's it, everybody. We'll see you next week with another One Piece discussion chapter. Can't wait for 955. It's going to be a great time. And uh, thanks for listening. Oh, see you then, everybody. Oh, yeah. Got no. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Patreon.com, Patreon the podcast account. pirates. We need your money. Support our pirate lifestyle. $1. Oh, wait, no, no. Uh, Patreon Discord is free below. Just click and join Talk One Piece. But be a member of the crew. One dollar, and you're no longer a filthy white. You're in the crew. You're our best friend. We love you. You're official cabin boy. And the more money you give, the more we like you. And that's the facts, everybody. <laughs> it's true. All right. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Salute to our commanders. And never shout out those guys. Commanders, thanks for being our commander and whipping the boys into shape. And the Crow Nest boys and... Uh, uh, who else have we got? The the cool, edgy crow's nest guy. The cool, there's edgy, the, mysterious guys. Uh, that's right. That's right. There's the crewmen. Uh, the, oh, oh, yeah. The, there's the cool, edgy, mysterious guys, the crow's nest dudes, the crewmen, and the lowly cabin boys. Thanks, everybody, for, for supporting the show. We really appreciate it. All right. That's it, everybody. We'll see you next week now for real. Have a good time. Bye. Bye.